Hey, uh, my name is Dawa Osinga. I am uh, one of the founders of Triposo, and um, I'll be talking about our uh, smart travel guides today. Um, I wanted to start with this uh, obnoxious slide because you know we talk a lot about big data, and I think the two speakers before me actually talked about big data. Uh, I won't be talking about smart big data because uh, my rule is if it fits on a USB stick, it's not big data. And Amazon sells one terabyte. USB sticks now, and so that's the new limit of big data. All right, what is Triposo? Um, we make smart travel guides. So smart travel guides, uh, you know, the, the travel guides on, on books have really not changed the last 100 years or so. Uh, on devices, you can go a lot further. You know, it knows where you are, it knows to some extent who you are, it knows the weather, it knows the time, it knows what you've been doing, and it can we can use all this information about, you know, to in order to give you clever um, suggestions that we pop up on the main screen. Our travel guides are completely algorithmic based. What does that mean? It means that we don't employ humans to write uh, travel guides or any of the information. We go out on the internet and collect all the uh, information that we can find, process that um, to some extent with uh, you know, simple uh, algorithms, but uh, ultimately that spits out uh, a, a, a data set that then gets uploaded by the uh, downloaded by the devices and show you these travel guides. We always joke that when the robots take over, they'll be on our side because, you know, we don't employ humans. We already have the, hum the, the robots. And uh, one of the nice side effects of that is that we cover the uh, entire world because we don't have to send riders to all the different locations. The only thing we have to do is make sure that our algorithms work for any location. And so uh, currently we cover over 10,000 cities with uh, 3 million points of interest in those cities and um, 180 countries, I believe. Um, and uh, so far our apps have been downloaded, I think, 8 million times or so which sounds like bragging, but it's somewhat relevant because it gives us uh, a lot of usage information that we then can use to uh, improve our uh, guides even more. So let's talk about the suggestions. Um, um, this, is, uh, this is the way that on an iPhone our uh, app looks uh, the first time you open it for, for Berlin. Uh, there is a download button that allows you to uh, make the thing work offline. All our guides work offline. And then there's these, uh, these suggestions. The, the, the idea is always that um, we, uh, uh, depending on where you are, we, we give you the, the, the thing that you might be uh, interested uh, most in. And uh, I'll be talking about these three uh, buttons that we uh, normally have. Um, like I said, the guide knows where you are. So uh, we have a nearby suggester that gives you some more information about what is nearby and what might be interesting there. Uh, it knows what time it is, for travel even more relevantly, what time it is at the local destination. So it can suggest some things that are uh, time-based. And finally, it uh, knows what the weather is. Actually, when I made this, uh, the weather forecast for Berlin was uh, quite bad. And so it uh, shows this. It's, it's, it's quite nice. I don't know if anybody of you have been outside, but uh, it is quite nice right now. So let's start with nearby. Um, obviously, uh, suggesting stuff nearby in itself is uh, quite easy. You ask the phone where it is, and then you go through your database of places, and you say, oh, well, these are nearby. Uh, maybe you want to check them out. So um, the question is more, how do you get to a uh, nice database of uh, places that are nearby? Um, the way that we do it, uh, we start with the web. Um, we uh, there's a whole bunch of places that uh, allow us to use their data. Uh, either these are open content places, like OpenStreetMaps or Wikipedia or uh, Wikitravel, or they're commercial parties like Facebook or Booking that have an API that is uh, applicable to this. And so what we do is uh, we go through all those places and uh, we get their feeds, split them in uh, what we call locations, which are essentially cities, and uh, POIs, which are the things 
in the cities that you might be interested in. And so now we have these two data sets uh, of a mixed uh, format. And um, we um, use a bunch of uh, uh, matching algorithms to try to figure out what is what. Um, this is in itself, of course, a um, complicated thing, uh, which uh, would easily take 15 minutes to explain. So uh, if you're interested in what exactly we do there, uh, come find me after this. Um, and then when we have all this combined, we end up with our 3 million POIs, and we uh, use a, um, our, uh, I copy this, uh, this slide from Michio. Um, so this is uh, our, our system. Uh, so part of our, uh, part of our processing is just done with two big machines in the kitchen of our office. It turns out that um, you can do a lot of uh, processing there if you don't care about real time or uh, big data but you do care about precision. <laughs> so, um, and it's, uh, it's certainly uh, cheaper than uh, renting those machines at uh, Amazon. And so those machines then uh, do this processing, push it to Dropbox and a Google spreadsheet that keeps track of what everything is. And then our, um, our guides from time to time fetch that Google spreadsheet and go uh, get the stuff from uh, S3. Right. And then we end up with uh, a nice list of suggestions of places that are nearby, uh, where we have some descriptions of the, the, the things, um, and we know uh, how far, far it is. All right. So weather-based suggestions. I'm uh, skipping here the, the, the next one, the, the time-based, because uh, there's some overlap, and it's easier to start with uh, weather. So weather-based suggestions, they try to uh, fetch the weather forecast uh, when you have data access and then uh, when you're ready to go out in town, uh, compare what the weather should be with uh, the sort of things that are attractive given that sort of weather. And um, it has the advantage that uh, we have a nice way to show you what the weather will be like and uh, inspire you to some extent, even if the weather is not so great. Like in this case where, um, I don't know how readable it is, but it says like, Museums are always an option, which seems very, uh, very fitting to um, if you visit Berlin this time of year. So um, we start, of course, with weather data. Uh, weather data is um, is uh, nice and open if you're uh, into that sort of thing. There's uh, these guys that have been collecting weather data since the 1800s or so, and you can collect these uh, this data in a format that is uh, vaguely based on uh, punch cards, of course, but um, you can process it with your whatever modern uh, thing you, you have. So what we do is uh, we get all this data, and uh, we line that up with the locations and POIs that we have. And then we look at uh, what our users actually do on those days. And we also look at uh, random picture sets that we find on the internet, and we look at when they are taken. And now, by lining those things up and associating this with POIs, we can see that um, some things, like a museum, the usage in there goes up a little bit in a rainy day, and the number of pictures that are taken is fairly equal. While if it's, if it's a park, you see that the number of pictures dramatically drops when the, the weather is not great. And if it's a beach, you see that the number of pictures that people take there actually drops when the temperatures are lower. And so uh, what we uh, do is we define, I think, 10 types of uh, weather based on uh, temperature, uh, whether it rains or not, and, uh, and sunniness. And then uh, we look which correlate with what type of user behavior, and then we spread this out based on either uh, a POI type. So you know, we, we say, OK, in general, we conclude that museums are good. And in some cases, if things are popular enough, we can actually do it on a, on a single POI level. And we can say, OK, well, this, this is really great where you should go um, to this restaurant uh, because it has outside seating. Of course, our algorithm doesn't really know that it has outside seating, but we do know that people go there when it's nice weather. And so we can say, hey, it's nice weather. Why don't you go to that bar? Um, and so we end up with um, weather-based uh, suggestions. Um, yes, and uh, apparently, according to our uh, algorithm, uh, the Jews Museum is the best place to go if, it, uh, if the weather is not so great. I'm sure the other ones are great too, but if you have extra time, uh, it's certainly worth a visit. Okay, um, five more minutes. That should work. Uh, what did you say? 
All right. Well, we'll uh, I can uh, I don't have slides for that, but I can talk more. <laughs> Uh, so, time-based suggestions. So, um, again, the first thing is uh, that we don't have to do all of the heavy lifting because our users use our app and they uh, they look at what they look at at a certain time, and uh, we have a um, log-based system of keeping track of this, immutable and JSON and everything. And so we, uh, what we, what we can do is we can actually look at what what people uh, look at at what time of the day, um, trying to um, fix this for their their local time zone. Because it turns out not everybody, when they travel overseas, adjusts their time zone. Some people just adjust the time, which then um, confuses the entire logging. So we have to, uh, you know, throw away uh, these people or make educated guesses. Um, so we, we we see that people uh, tend to look at uh, coffee in the morning and uh, start to look at lunch around, well, lunchtime. And uh, with dinner, in one of the interesting things that we do see is that uh, people start looking at dinner places, so around five. And then the later it gets, the smaller the distance is between the user and the place that they look at. Right, because you know, when, when they're starting to look at dinner around five, they're really willing to, to go out of their way, doing a little bit of research and that sort of thing. But by the time it's nine, they really want to have the kebab around the corner because now they're hungry. So um, the thing, though, is that uh, in order to give people uh, the right type of uh, time-based suggestions, we're, uh, we're mostly interested in things that are not just highly ranked according to our thing, but that are highly ranked for a specific topic, right? Because the overall ranking of a place, it, it's entirely possible and uh, quite likely even that the the best coffee place might not have the best service. You know, it's because it's uh, manned by some bearded hipster that is more interested in the quality of the coffee than in, in you. And uh, they forbid you to have Wi-Fi or, you know, use your laptop or, or, or whatever. And um, But they still have great coffee. So what we do in order to, uh, to, 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 to get to the opinions, um, we take our database of POIs and um, we look at all the value properties that we have. For example, we say, okay, um, this place has a phone number and this is the phone number string. So then we go look on the internet at large whether we can find this property anywhere. And we do the same with all the other uh, properties that we have. We, have a, we track about 20 properties. And so then uh, we have all these pages that where we found these properties on, which are like, could be about the places that we, uh, that we have in our database, right? And so we uh, collect them all on a per domain basis and then see, okay, if this is indeed the phone number, then we would expect that we have multiple hits on the HTML pattern around this phone number for different POI places in our database, right? You expect that um, the, the it's it's a it's it's a it's a it's a lucky you know it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a guess but you expect that if a uh, database of reviews of coffee places mentions the phone number that the HTML around that phone number will be the same for every POI that they have. It's not always true, but uh, if you have enough pages, it turns out that it's true enough. And so what we can do then is say, okay, as soon as we find for a certain domain that um, we have five hits for any of the properties, or we have multiple hits for different properties, we can now assume that actually we have a way of detecting that this page is actually about our POIs. And then what we can do is um, we uh, start opinion mining. So there's all these um, people that, uh, the, these language models where y you have uh, words that uh, describe certain uh, opinions and uh, about things. And so that way we can then uh, conclude that this page is about coffee and that they are very enthusiastic about the coffee. And so we uh, then forward this to our POIs and say, okay, uh, for this this POI, you can uh, we, we score them on these uh, various dimensions. And one of the results of that uh, will then be that uh, we think that uh, Bonanza coffee is uh, really uh, quite good. Uh, the barn is on two. I should really have swapped that because it turns out that the barn has a little uh, local presence here on the on the thing. And but yeah, I mean. Like uh, the people at Google like to say, um, 
the algorithms are neutral. We can't help you. We can't change anything here. All right, so that uh, concludes our uh, three suggestors on the main page. We have a, a bunch of uh, more uh, minor ones, but uh, that is it uh, for uh, now. Well, thank you very much. Go. So do you also collect uh, user data from users, like uh, um, ratings or stuff, or is it just based on everything that's on the internet? No, we do. You mean our users or other people's users? Uh, so we do keep track of. Uh, so the the the, the whole uh, weather-based uh, calculation is based on what our users do in our app. Yeah. So we, we we do keep track of that. We don't have ratings and that sort of thing. We only use it. We're not a big fan of uh, explicit feedback. It tends, you know, it's interesting, but it tends to be uh, a bit skewed because only people that are really annoyed or really enthusiastic tend to do it, and so you mi you miss sort of the middle bit. And if people, you know, the best way to see that the suggester works is if we say, you know, this is a great coffee place, and then really see that the user goes there. Uh, what's your natural uh, language processing toolkit thingy, or do you do use any? Or um, so uh, the w we we uh, use for a lot of stuff. We use Python, and so there's this NLTK or what is it called? Uh, uh, mm toolkit, which is uh, really quite powerful and awfully slow. All right, thanks. <laughs>